standing to receive the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Anna Rothery. Gary Miller, James Noakes, Frank Nagast, Liam Robinson, and Thomas. Are there any other apologies to report? Uh, to his accent, 
who is pursuing policies... Councillor, like can, can, can we refrain from making accusations or personal uh, recriminations against people? Yes, I can do it, because uh, I'm certainly not... This is a political point that I'm making. But, but why not, man? Just, just, just for, it, it really is important the facts are, are put out there if you're going to engage the... The communication that was sent out from the United the Union came from Richie James, regional organiser, not from Len McCluskey. The headline in the Echo was Len McCluskey's man or Len McCluskey's union, Max Joe Anderson. It was Richie James, the regional organiser, that sent out the letter uh, on behalf of JTO. Well, I can uh, not know how Unite works, as you do, I'm happy to accept that as well. But there are two points that I want to make uh, about what's on the order paper today before we start the heart of the debate. I notice from the amendment that you want to delete the reference to the fact that the Lib Dems tried to call the meeting earlier this year. I've got no problem with that. We didn't put it in in the first place. It went in because officers suggested it should go in. And we'll see in the report from the Chief Executive, he makes it clear what happened. We don't need to put it in because the people of Liverpool know where we stand. The other thing that has come up is that the report produced by the Chief Executive referred only to the two of the models available. I don't know why that is. We didn't ask for that to happen because our motion is quite clear that it asks for a discussion on the three substantive points. And in fact, of course, the fourth option, which is a hybrid model, which we won't be supporting for a variety of reasons. So, where are we? Well, let's go back to when this all started. In 2012, this council dodged a referendum which would have put the choice of the people of Liverpool by just two days. The localism act had been introduced, a statutory instrument was prepared that was going to be put to a committee of the House with a debate. It was a debated statutory instrument uh, and in fact, two days before that happened, we had uh, a move in this council chamber without uh, having a referendum, without consulting the people of Liverpool, to move to a mayoral system. And that has been resented by people in Liverpool ever since. For your information, of the 11 remaining councils that had a referendum, one, Bristol, voted to have a mayoralty and there is now a referendum being planned to uh, get rid of that mayoralty and the remaining 10 councillors, all of them led by Labour councillors, decided against having a mayoral model on the advice of the Labour leaders of those councils. One of the key elements that we were told was going to make all this worthwhile was the fact that because there'd been meetings with George Osborne, there was going to be an unlimited cornucopia of money flowing into this city. Of course, that never happened. And in two weeks' time, when we have a special budget, uh, special budget meeting uh, of this council, we will be looking at the realities of that. The second thing that hasn't that has changed since we first went to this is that we now have, of course, a second mayor. It's interesting that there have been two reports about the mayoralty in Liverpool. The first was by Professor Michael Parkinson, and it looked at the differences between Leader Anderson and Mayor Anderson. Unsurprisingly, it recognised that he was doing better as the mayor because, of course, he'd been in the job longer. The second looked at what could be learned from a mayoral model as distinct uh, in a way that could be applied to, at the time, the emerging city region mayor, which of course, we all know, the existing city mayor would have liked to occupy the seat of. It's concluded that there was nothing particularly relevant about the city model, because of course the city region model is an entirely different job. It's interesting to note that, as the chief executive tells us in his report, there has never been a review on whether elected mayoralties work generally, although successive governments have pushed them, 
both for councils and of course for the new combined authorities or county regions, or uh, indeed for our own model. But we do know if we look at uh, any comparison between this council and the other core cities that the mayoral model has failed to deliver. Now we don't know that officially, because in 2014, I'm sorry if I go back a bit, but that's how long this has all been going on, the council took a decision against the advice of uh, Councillor Radford and I, and I can't remember if Councillor Crone or your predecessor as leader in the Mayor's Select Committee, that we should have a regular audit of the council of the key the KPIs, key performance indicators, with other city regions. So we are not able, as a council, to compare ourselves. But let me tell you that those other councils, I think I had 10 minutes to introduce the debate. Okay, and that counts. Five minutes, you should know by now, that's again. Well, they did. It, it seems to vary from time to time. So, in that case, I will draw to a close by saying that we will be opposing the Labour amendment, but I didn't intend in any way to deal with that uh, when I replied to the debate on, the, uh, on, on this main item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kevin. Can I just say you've actually had eight minutes, so not far out of ten. Is this seconded? <coughs> seconded and we said Thank you, Councillor Lincolnson. I've had an indication from Councillor Bradford. Oh, sorry, move the amendment. Sorry. Come on, I have to bear with me, it isn't the first time. Uh, can I ask uh, Councillor Parsons to move the amendment, please? Thank you, Lord Mayor, and welcome, Ms. Speaker, to the book. Very moving. This amendment is really important, and it's important because while we're sitting in this chamber, there are communities across the city in pain. There are communities hurting as a result of austerity and violence. I've spent the summer feeding families in food poverty. I've been in homes in the last few weeks in this city and communities that have been infested with cockroaches to such an extent that partner agencies will no longer visit. It's really shocking, but that's what's actually happening in some of the communities in this city, and I sat and cried about that. In two weeks' time, we'll sit here in this chamber again and discuss the painful task of making yet more cuts. We face telling people that the services they rely on could be curtailed because of austerity. And all of us in this chamber, every one of us, must bear the responsibility for making the necessary changes over the way our city is run. We must make sure that the people of this city are connected with the administration of the services that they depend on. The Mayor's Inclusive Growth Plan states clearly Liverpool City Council exists to serve the interests of citizens and communities to ensure the best outcomes for them. To do this, Councillor Kemp's right, we need to listen. We need to involve our communities in both the design and delivery of services, but also in the process of decision making. The Mayor's plan is radical, but it will change the way our city develops. We can only help people build wealth for themselves, their families and their communities if we make our city and our economy more inclusive. And to make that happen, our city needs a conversation with people about how, at every level, it's wrong. We need to empower people to tell us what they want and what they need to make change. And we're already working really hard to put this in place. We've commissioned inside work and initial feedback has identified that, unfortunately, many people within our communities don't understand the services that the council are responsible for and provide, let alone how decisions or governance is made. We've just realigned resources to form a city conversation team to work with elected members, communities and partners to identify, promote and build on excellent initiatives and activity that already takes place in some areas. We need to hear everybody. Residents, businesses, community organisations, making sure that we don't just listen to the loud voices, but that we hear the voices of many, not the few. We cannot shift the culture of how we operate and make engagement meaningful in a short space of time. We are changing the entire culture of the council and the way that it responds and works with our communities. It really matters. It's really important that we get it right because people's lives are dependent on this and the way that we deliver. We need to build trust in our neighbourhoods 
and ask people to engage with us. And they won't do that if we go in and demand that change happens. And change is frightening for people who are already frightened. The mechanism we use to engage citizens on governance arrangements has to be fit for purpose. It needs to be impartial and it needs to be based on fact and inclusive. It should not detract from city conversation engagement about how we work with communities effectively, but it needs to complement it and be part of that process. And let's be clear, under no circumstances should it be a desperate political stunt to get people into the newspaper like the Lib Dems and to provide a narrative for your leaflets. And I can use fancy words about this process for city conversation. I can talk about co-creation, empowerment and participation. But as we're forced to make the most painful cuts our generation has ever had to endure, there is a simple truth. The people of this city expect us to work with them to solve problems. They expect us to give them control and improve our city with them in the driving seat. And that's the process that we are already engaged in. That's why this Labour administration respects the people of the city and the knowledge that we've already got, and that's why we are moving this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Parsons. Councillor, do we have a seconder for your amendment, please? Councillor Simon, you have a seconder. Do we have any indications to, oh, sorry, Councillor Radford to speak to the main motion? Can I, um, my Lord Mayor, um, speak to both the main motion and the amendment? Uh, just make some generic points, which I do think are valid, and I know are probably successfully upset everybody, which is always a good formula to work on the basis of. Um, I think the expectations of the Mayor of Marvel. Uh, was going to achieve was probably exaggerated by those people who opponents, just as the failings of the mayoral model are being exaggerated by those people who are opponents. One of the uh, comments Councillor Parson used was talking about impartiality and, and objectivity. Well, I'm going to be honest, I think on a couple of occasions the, the officer of mayor has been detracted from uh, when we did hit basically political stunts like the promise over the Carlton site, which was a pure deception being sorted out and brought the office into disrepute. I'll say that up front. I think the, uh, the use of public funds for employment tribunal, I still think was ethically wrong and I think a large number of the other public do not understand the legal nuances given to why it was done. But I'll set those criticisms aside. I do not believe genuinely that this city council could have coped with the financial downsizing and the decision making that had to be made without the mayor model. I say that for two reasons. I say that because as a personal manager working at an international telecom firm, I had to deal with seven major redundancies. And actually, by being honest with our children and union representatives and employees, and actually taking difficult decisions early, meant there was less pain to go down the line. The longer you pull off a financially difficult situation, the harsher it will when it hits the railway line. You can't do it. And I'll be honest, I sat through the Budget Working Party, and I had great pleasure in working, particularly with them. Councillor Ross Grady. And then there was conflict. That was it. The whole nature of making different decisions will be there with different conscious. But at the end of the day, everybody had the chance to put their comments to the mayor. The mayor consulted probably wider than he would have done had we had the traditional party system. I'll be upfront of that, and I thank him for that. And the decision was made. It wasn't thrown into the long grass. And I think that essentially helps Liverpool cope with the dr most dramatic downsizing of any council anywhere in history of local government since we Liberals created it back in the 1880s to a large degree. Don't think anyone else could have coped. And the second thing is, 
if we are going to discuss changing the system, we've got to look ahead. Do we believe that the size of the financial challenges coming to this city, regardless of whether um, Jeremy Corbyn wants to bottom out of having a general election or decides to have one this week, um, then will anything change? The reality is no. Don't think that is on the horizon. So I'll be absolutely upfront with the Liberal Party group would support the retention of the mayoral model. The second reason is, I'm going to say that without any personal dislike to the guy, I think had we had a more um, dynamic or impact made by the city of the mayor, then a different case. I think we go on to myself, we go up down any street in the city, people will say the city regional mayor has to make the impact what's expected. And I don't say that any slight or act, just say that is why I hear every time the conversation comes up. Lastly, there is one third question, is do we believe other... Councillor Lambert, can you come to a close one, please? Uh, indeed I will. I think the third question is, do we think that international business would take us more seriously if we took a step backwards? I do not. Therefore, I, I won't support the uh, motion by the Dems. I think it's actually gesture politics. They've already declared they don't want the mail system. Fine, that's fine. That's very honest. They've declared the old sort of by election. We'll declare we think the challenge of the city needs to continue. And I'm sure the consultation by those people who have considered interest in the city will come to the same conclusion. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Councillor Rafford. I have another question from Councillor Lakinson. Did you indicate that you wanted to speak? <laughs> the second time, yeah. Thank you, Madam The straw argument made by some, including the Echo, is that the mayoral model is the Tories' preferred way of dealing with major cities. Well, I never expected to hear that Liverpool should pander to the Tories. But even if you bought into this furious argument, the mayoral model was the pet project of David Cameron and George Osborne, and indeed was also Tony Blair's project before that. It's obvious to everyone, except perhaps the voice of the echo, that the world has changed in the last four years. Even if you were naive enough to believe that Cameron and Osborne would have granted Liverpool any special favours, they're yesterday's men. The argument goes on that we shouldn't model ourselves on places like Stoke or Sunderland when we're a major city. Well, major cities like Birmingham, Leeds, Manchester, Glasgow and Edinburgh are all prospering without an elected mayor. So why do we insist on modelling ourselves on Doncaster, Salford, Mansfield and Copeland, wherever that is? We're Liverpool and we're bigger than one person's ego. Thank you. Uh, we didn't need an elected mayor to regenerate the city centre with Liverpool 1, the pier head or the Arena Convention Centre. We're one capital of culture without an elected mayor. And if you believe we need a figurehead who can carry weight with inward investors and lobby for big projects, well that's the me Metro Mayor's job. That's what he should be doing. We don't need two mayors representing us in Cannes with bemused investors left wondering which mayor they should be speaking to. We're left with less influence than places like Manchester because that influence is getting diluted between two mayors and a police commissioner. And if you believe you could get three Labour politicians to work together, which they've proved incapable of doing so far, you still can't guarantee that in the future you will have three positions being held by members of the same party. Now, I don't believe in directly elected executives. I'd much rather see some sort of regional assembly with real devolved power. But if we must use that model, let's just have one person fighting for our city region instead of three fighting amongst themselves. My Lord Mayor, there's lingering resentment in the city that people weren't given a proper say in 2012, or any say at all. So let's have a real consultation now, with a guarantee that the mayoral system will end in May if that is what the people decide. Thank you. 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 Nearly two terms after the mayoral model was imposed on the people of Liverpool without a referendum, I do think there really is a need now to have a proper debate and actually consult the people of Liverpool. 
The Green position has always been that the mayoral model is too centralised with one person having the ability to set the agenda to make most of the decisions in the council. That's just not how it should be. We've got select committees that have got more or less no power and routinely ignored. The cabinet which is just rubber stamping decisions that have already been made. We need a much more inclusive governance arrangement so that all councils, all elected members from different parties are properly engaged in policy development and decision making. Unlike Council Redford, I do think that you know, more people being involved in decision making will lead to better outcomes. It's actually about democracy, it's as simple as that. We're all elected, we should all be able to do our jobs and represent the people who elected us. So there are various systems which could be adopted and I think most of them are better than the mayoral system. And I was going to support the motion. I think the problem with the amendment is that it actually removes the, the, the key point of the, of the whole motion, which is that we will consult the people, we'll ask for their opinions and we'll base our future decisions on what they say to us. The city conversation is it's, it's an unclear mechanism. We don't really know what we're doing here and we don't know what the outcomes will be. So it makes the whole thing a bit pointless. We really should vote against this amendment, keep it as it was, and then we'll have a proper consultation to decide our future. Thank you, Councillor Chair. Can I give Mayor Anderson, please, you're indicated to speak. Look, Mayor, I, I just want to deal with the, just, just a couple of things quickly. The both really from uh, Councillor Kelly. I always like to point out, especially to some of uh, our, our new councillors and even some that are new, uh, you know, I want to say even 10, 12, 12 years ago. I was watching the, the debate in Parliament today and, and I think, I can't remember who it was, but uh, they challenged uh, Boris Johnson and said, listen, it doesn't matter what you say because no one believes you. Um, you, you. You basically tell lies and no one believes you. And, and, and that's the same problem with the Liberal Democrats, it's the same problem with, with Richard Kemp, no one believes them because they tell lies and they continue to tell lies. Because let's just be very back a little bit, it's important that people understand that all the government's act in 2001 and then amended in 2003. So when the Liberal Democrats were in power in 1997, in 2002, they went from a committee system, they went from a committee system, to a leader and cabinet member. Now that was the options plus a mayor model within the local government act. Did they consult anyone? No. no. Did they have a referendum? No. no. Did they just vote it through no matter what anybody said? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So rest my case, and that's the bump of the crap. Let's then talk about uh, Tom Cronin's uh, issue around democracy. Did you read the LGA report, Councillor uh, Cronin? Did you read the LGA report? actually said that we've got more scrutiny than any other council in the country. Okay, that's what they said. Independents, Lib Dems, business people, chief executives from other council, that's exactly what they said. Now, from the point of view of um, regeneration, from the point of view of scrutiny and regeneration being scrutiny, scrutinised, every single uh, development goes through a process of procurement goes through planning and is scrutinised. It's absolutely a myth and a lie to suggest that developers get their own way. The only way uh, that happens is in a tin pot dictatorship in a foreign country. It doesn't happen here in Liverpool, but it doesn't happen anywhere else where they have a male model. And it's disingenuous and a lie to say that it is. But the point of the uh, debate that we're having and Councillor Kemp will again tell you that we should consult with the people of the city. Now I looked at the ECHO uh, websites and Councillor Kemp set up a petition or he told the ECHO he was setting up a petition against the mayoral model. There is none, he never did. But there is one that's set up called change.org and there's 600 odd people. That's, that's how many since 2013. 600 people have signed that petition. And equally, when you look at it, Every single election, 2012, 2016, there's been five, six candidates that have stood out of the 11 uh, in 2016, and I think 13 in 2012, that said they would scrap the mayor and revert back to the leader model. Percentage-wise, really poor, and it was in single figures. The, 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 the culmination 
of all of those candidates got. So the very idea that the people of this city are chomping at the bit to actually change a model of governance, where as rightly being said, we've got one, one in four kids living in poverty, we've got real problems that we're facing. But equally, we're seeing the growth of the economy of this city with 30,000 people in work, with 4,400 businesses being created, 7.6 billion pounds worth of investment in the last three years, and taking place five miles of regeneration from Bramley Moor right the way through to South Liverpool. That's going to transform this city. You have look at Paddington Village. Look at that 1.2 billion pounds of debt development. The trumps the 30 acres that will be developed. Trumps Liverpool one. And don't you dare claim credit for capital and culture or claim credit for the arena and convention centre. Because it was actually, and we are still paying for it, it was actually the European Development Fund that funded those. And it's actually, by the way, and in credit to Steve Rodham, the Metro Mayor, Steve doesn't run Liverpool, neither does he run Sefton, neither does he run Wirral or Halton. What he does do is support economic growth. That's why the city region is supporting Paddington Village. That's why the city region is supporting the new cruise line at Terminal. That's why the city region is supporting us in Palmyra, where we're going to be creating thousands more jobs. Not only that's going to provide investment and revenue to pay our long services that we want to keep, but it's talking about investment of the future of our city. And that's what a mayor does. That's what a mayor brings to the table. And that's vision, but it's also working with the unions, working with the voluntary sector, working with the private sector, and working with this council too. There's two more people who've indicated to speak. And then we've got a right of reply from Councillor Kemp. And did you second them to Councillor Simon? Councillor Lake, Well, there has been moved that the question be put. Use that normally goes procedurally to the council to vote on that the question be put. I'm going to take the vindicated councillor Lake can use, please. Yeah, we've, we've, I'm sure we've all read the agenda, and, and I'll just refer to a couple of points from, from the agenda. Um, and, and, and the first point is that it, it's about the time, um, dis making decisions on future governance in such time as is necessary to preclude. Well, when, when, when will that be? And, and when would be the right time for this consultation, given the national scenarios which are being played out at the moment and the ramifications that, that surely will follow them. Uh, the other point here in the notes is that, is that um, since the mid-2000s, the policy of successive governments has been one of encouraging local authorities, especially core cities, to consider changing their governance arrangements to that of the elected mayor. So, why are we going to fly in the face of that now, and at this pivotal time? And, and, and what message does that send to our detractors at a time when the management of our budget going forward will be absolutely key uh, uh, and be crucial in, 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 in the next 12 months? Um, if, when we look at the differences between the two models, in the leader and cabinet, the leader is elected by the council for a period of up to four years and can be removed by a simple majority vote, which I would suggest would be quite frequently and, and far too frequently for consistency to, to prevail. I, I, I believe that the, the city of Liverpool deserves the gravitas of the office of mayor. It, it, it's, it's an office that's understood and recognise all around Europe and the rest of the world, which is important if we are to assert ourselves in global markets. 
the office does betray, betray rather, stability and, and business creates stability. If the office of regional mayor was actually punching its weight as it does elsewhere, then maybe we wouldn't need this profile, but we do. However, the, the office should not be at the centre of a personality cult, nor should it be at the centre of a personality witch hunt. The office, the office of mayor, the office of mayor, and what it can do for the city and bring to the city is much more important than that. I'm going to move to the right to reply from Councillor Kemp, and then I'm going to move to the first one. My lover, let me just begin by correcting the elected mayor, who has a poor recollection of the dates. We took control of the council in 1998. We introduced a cabinet and leader system in 1999 because the law then was that we could not have a committee system that was brought in by the Localism Act and we actually introduced the system from 1999, although we didn't want to. We had the choice then of a committee system or a mayoral system. These are facts uh, of Mayor Anderson. And we would have preferred at that time to go through the committee system which we massively improved by taking out loads of subcommittees and working parties and task groups and having a small group of people who were able to represent the council so that quick decisions could be taken but nevertheless having a select committee, we called it select committee, not scrutiny system uh, which would enable more detailed scrutiny, particularly long term scrutiny to take place. But why aren't we supporting the amendment today? Because I don't think most members of the Labour Party actually realise that this is just putting the whole issue into the long grass to get us through the next elections. In Torbay, in 2013, there was a referendum to get rid of the mayor. That's 2016, I apologise. There was a referendum to get rid of the mayoralty. The mayor was in position, despite losing that referendum, till May this year. Because if the situation happens that a mayor gets elected next May, then they will stay in place till 2024, unless that mayor chooses to resign. That is a pledge that will be in the Liberal Democrat manifesto that the Liberal Democrat candidate for mayor will make at that time. We do not believe that the mayoral model is right. We believe that contrary to what you've heard, all the evidence is that Liverpool is a poorly performing city. If you look at the key performance indicators on education, investment and quality of investment uh, against other poor cities, and I must say, Councillor Crone is right when he talks about the quality of developers that we've attracted. There are 15 hockey developments in this city, unbuilt, half-built, having to be closed. Maybe. Manchester Maybe. has one. Councillor Kemp. Councillor Kemp. There's one. There's one. No, Just for a moment, please. Councillor Kemp, can oh. you please refrain from making accusations, unless you can substantiate them, which well, I don't think all you can. Those, all those would be well into what well, well, would they be? Councillor Kemp, request to the now, please, your time is up. But I won't respond if you don't want me to, to the nonsense. Councillor Kemp, can you write? I simply say, my Lord Mayor, that do not put this into the long grass. If you do, I can tell you now that we will bring it back in time for a decision to be made before the necessary steps have to be taken for the May 2020 elections. Do this properly, do this quickly, or we will be bringing this back to council. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. I'm going to now move to a vote on the amendment. So, okay. Sorry. Having a car vote, please, on the amendment. Okay. Car vote, please. <coughs> the 